Hi, I'm Hari Srinivasan and this is Take on Fake. Many of us have been there. Our family group chat or email thread starts with a cute baby picture. But then, before you know it, everyone is debating politics and calling each other out for sharing fake news. I spoke with Alex Clark, host of PBS Nova Education's show, Misinformation Nation, about the best ways to discuss misinformation with the people you love. Alex Clark, I have wanted to talk to you for my show on debunking misinformation. Well, Hari, that's interesting because I've actually been wanting to talk to you about my show on misinformation. Oh, you've got such a cool job. So tell me a little bit about your show. Tell me about what it is that you do. For PBS's Nova, I work on a show called Misinformation Nation, and we debunk, analyze, depict, and offer tips about misinformation in the world around us for people who are younger. You know, people who are younger makes me think, does misinformation reach people differently depending on their age? So are grandparents likely to see a different kind of misinformation or react differently than young people? Absolutely. Depending on your age, depending on your background, your region, your language, it's possible that you can be put into a bubble where you only get information from a certain collection of sources or just certain things that relate to how you actually feel yourself based on your prior viewing. Okay, so when it comes from friends or family who are quoting things that are really not legit, how do you have a conversation with them without it getting super awkward? The bad news is sometimes it has to be awkward, but it has to be done. With a loved one, you'll have to spend a lot more time proving that you care and trying to find some common ground and disrupting those beliefs. Alex says the best way to have that talk is in person. It helps to have information ready to share, but it may be even better to research the topic together, ideally using a source that they trust. Most importantly, be empathetic. All right, so let's go through some examples here. So what if your Aunt Gertrude, and I don't have an aunt named Gertrude, says to you January 6th was totally a hoax, it was all Antifa that was responsible. So in that conversation with Aunt Gertrude, I'm probably going into this knowing her point of view already because I've probably heard this information before. And I want to approach this from a standpoint of empathy. You need to realize that in approaching these conversations, you do not know everything. And also you may have been wrong in the past. Secondly, I would want to focus on that one specific detail. Did Antifa cause the January 6th insurrection? It's very common when you're having these discussions with family members that things will kind of veer into other territories, but just keep the conversation focused on this one fact. So Gertrude has a son named Wilford. Let's say this tween named Wilford finds on TikTok an idea that says certain types of foods are gonna gave you your smell and taste back if you've had COVID. What do you say to Wilford? Ooh, Wilford is in a good place. I like Wilford because if he's approaching me with this thing that he found on his own, uh, if he's starting that discussion, then likely I'm going to have a better chance of reaching him more quickly. Now, my goal is not to change Wilford's opinion, it's to come together with him and both work through this together. So TikTok is great a lot of information there, but it could be so much that when you're looking at something related to health or science, that you definitely need to give it another look and see who the source is. Is the source credible? Do they have a background in the subject? Uh, are they legitimate? All right, how about something more broad and general or broad and flat, like people who think the earth is flat? Your cousin Ethel is on YouTube all the time and she comes to you and says, Alex, the earth is in fact flat. You're wrong. How do you deal with that? When you encounter somebody who has an extreme belief, and I just mean something that contradicts science to its core, those beliefs are generally rooted in a community that might be offering them something that gives them solace, it gives them a sense of purpose, it gives them a unified vision of the reality of the world as they see it. So in the case of, say, flat earth theorists or climate change, whether or not that's real, the science is really clear. 
before you have that discussion about misinformation, you have to be ready to have that discussion. And that means prepare yourself. I'm not talking about with facts, with information, with websites and theories for a debate, but prepare yourself to really try to have a real conversation about why it is they believe the things they do. Remember, you are not going to change someone's deeply held belief and opinion very easily. And while it is important to point out dangerous misinformation, it's even more important to be patient and understanding. So I don't know about your family, but if I were to come out with some things I believe on Thanksgiving, start kind of hammering everyone, I would probably be shunned out of the room pretty quickly. So <laughs> it's really about kind of coming from a level playing field, so to speak, where you can really respect the other person and start to get to what matters. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks to Alex Clark for joining me. Until next time, don't spread fake news, keep it real. I'm Hari Srinivasan and this is Take on Fake. Thanks for watching. You can get more of Alex Clark on YouTube. Check out his debunking work on PBS Nova Education's Misinformation Nation.